So far, 0.63% of Illinois firearm owner identification card holders have registered firearms, and the deadline, January 1st, is going to kick in after uh, courts have uh, denied uh, moving forward with uh, delaying that in uh, that January 1st deadline uh, to react to that and to uh, see what happens here in the future. Joining us on Bishop on Air is John Bach. He is the executive director of Guns Save Life. John, thanks for taking time with us this morning. How are you? Good morning, Greg. Uh, pleased to be here. Great job on this new show. Well, it's uh, all from the uh, confines of my home. Uh, so welcome into my home, uh, at least virtually via Zoom. So I appreciate you taking the time with us. Uh, let's get on into it because those registration numbers, of course, I've been given that uh, you know rate of FOID card holders uh, that have registered. But you're looking at it from that other side of people who haven't registered. What does that number look like? I am. Uh... The governor likes to say we've had thousands of FOID card holders have complied with the registration scheme. My response to that is there are millions of gun owners in Illinois who haven't registered a thing. 99.4% non-compliance rate. That's pretty astounding, and it's got to be pretty humiliating for the governor and his buddies like uh, Bob Morgan and other people who advocate for gun control against the law abiding instead of going after gang members and violent criminals in Chicago who are the ones shooting up the city and killing people. Instead, they come after law abiding gun owners trying to make us criminals because we won't register our self-defense firearms. So, John, uh, still with that, though, there I'm sure a lot of people who are looking at the January 1st deadline wondering uh, what they can do. From your understanding of PICA, uh, the Protect Illinois Communities Act, the ban on 170 plus semi-automatic firearms and attachments and 50 caliber mag uh, ammunition and such, uh, what, what options do they have? Well, they have several options, ranging from completely legal to just completely ignoring the law is a, a, a conscious decision to ignore the law. But first and foremost, they could surrender the gun to police. They could destroy the firearm. They could sell the gun to somebody who's an exempted person or an FFL to sell out of state to uh, another gun owner somewhere else in the nation. Uh, they could always bury the gun. Um, that's an option uh, for people who have uh, a place to, to bury it or to hide it, such as an old mausoleum. Uh, they could have a boating accident, a tragic boating accident. But if you have one of those, make sure you let DNR know you had a boating accident or you could face a $150 or $200 fine. Uh, other options include uh, rehoming your firearm outside of Illinois. That's an option a lot of people, including myself, have chosen to get the gun out of Illinois and out of the reach of the governor. Uh, of course, that's perfectly legal without any paperwork, as long as you don't bring the gun back into Illinois until this law is overturned in the courts, which I'm confident is going to happen probably late uh, in 2024 at the latest, uh, maybe early 2025. It's going to happen sooner or later, uh, probably in the sooner end of the scheme of things. Uh, last but not least, of course, uh, people could just keep their mouth shut, keep their gun safe uh, locked. Uh, and just keep a low profile, and they face a very, very low probability of police ever knocking on the door. And of course, if police do knock on the door, we urge people not to ask in, or answer any questions, not to consent to any searches. Gun owners should remember that it's not their obligation to prove to any Illinois State Police investigators they no longer have these particular firearms, but for the Illinois State Police to prove that these gun owners still have the firearm care custody and control of the firearm and if they don't have that they're not in violation of the law john bach joins us he is the executive director of guns save life and uh, the website uh, is gunsavelife.com or is it .org remind me on that one it's .com uh, i think .org will get you there as well uh, i also write for the truth about guns uh, the web's largest firearms blog but uh, gun save life is uh, the bread and butter uh, for what I've been doing the last year or so here in Illinois, fighting this, uh, uh, in our view, unconstitutional and illegal uh, legislation that targets gun owners instead of criminals. John, you were uh, also uh, party of the lawsuit that was uh, decided on Friday uh, with Judge Stephen McGlynn denying that preliminary injunction on that January 1st deadline. Your thoughts on his ruling? 
I think he's a, a very wise jurist. Um, I have no faults in what his uh, reasoning and logic were behind it. We've got a Seventh Circuit Court of Appeals, uh, three-judge panel there, who has ignored the U.S. Supreme Court decision in Bruin, uh, ignored that precedent, ignored their role as an inferior court to the United States Supreme Court. And until and unless uh, we get around that through a ruling from the U.S. Supreme Court to counteract uh, that three-judge panel, uh, I think we're kind of in this box where we have to fight this out, argue the case on its merits, work our way through the appeals process, get to the U.S. Supreme Court, assuming there's not another case. Uh, I think there's about five other cases across the nation who are very similar to ours who may be accepted by the U.S. Supreme Court before we get there, potentially one out of California that in, coincidentally is also run by the same uh, legal group that uh, we have. But um very optimistic that we're going to get these uh, gun bans and magazine bans struck down in a, well, not quite as timely as we would like, but it's going to happen very soon here, and they're going to be thrown onto the dustbin of uh, history uh, to be a thing of the past. Uh, things like separate but equal uh, and things like that, uh, well, gun bans are going to be in that same category as uh, some of these other uh, earlier decisions and earlier laws that were just grossly unconstitutional to uh, Americans. John, of course, the uh, gun ban uh, and the magazine ban and registry, uh, not the only thing that uh, Illinoisans had had to um, deal with uh, in the state of Illinois. Yes. You've got the firearm owner identification card. Uh, you've had uh, separate lawsuits uh, dealing with that. And there's others floating around in there, even one from attorney Thomas Mag uh, in federal courts that uh, could come up. Uh, what's your prediction heading into 2024 when it comes to uh, the uh, pre purchase registration uh, license scheme that uh, seems to be being challenged elsewhere throughout the country as well. Well, there are similar schemes that have been challenged elsewhere in the country. Uh, our lawsuit challenging the constitutionality of the Floyd, uh, Floyd Act in state court has been in place since, what, 2019, four years-ish, going on five. Um, obviously, in 1791, there were how many states that had Floyd cards? Uh, not a single one. Uh, so there's no text, history, or tradition uh, that supports the Floyd Act, and it's going to be struck down. Right now, we're in the uh, Fourth District uh, Court of Appeals here in Illinois. Uh, it doesn't really matter how they decide. It's going to get appealed to the Illinois Supreme Court uh, next year. Ultimately, when the Illinois Supreme Court gets it, they can uh, comport with the decision from the U.S. Supreme Court in Bruin. Or they can try to get creative and, as I call it, stupid with it and come up with another one of these creative uh, decisions, which we would uh, at that point appeal to the U.S. Supreme Court. And I'm pretty confident that uh, Clarence Thomas and these other justices would accept uh, an appeal on the Floyd card challenge because, again, there were no states that had a Floyd card in 1791. There's no legal precedence for it. And obviously, it runs counter to the U.S. Supreme Court, that, or I'm sorry, the U.S. Constitution that says shall not be infringed. John, um, back to the gun ban and registry. When I asked the governor, oh gosh, what, two weeks ago, uh, why have the registry? Uh, he first said he didn't understand the question and then said, well, we need to know where these dangerous firearms are for if there's another um crime uh, that may be committed with them. Uh, your reaction to that, but also what are you hearing from some of your sources and as far as uh, uh, what, what could come in 2024, uh, and uh, especially for those who do register banned firearms? Well, the governor, frankly, Greg, says a lot of things, and I can't help but think he's been partaking in some of that uh, uh, marijuana that's sold in uh, dispensary stores across the state uh, because he seems to be living in an alternate universe, an alternate world. Uh, what could happen? Uh, I think there's a lot of things that could happen, certainly. Uh, I don't think the Illinois State Police have the uh, staff to go out and conduct enforcement raids. They may try to do some spot uh, compliance checks for more prolific purchasers of firearms if uh, their, their firearms are not registered uh, with the Illinois State Police uh, per this law. And at that point, I think it would be voluntary, although they might try to find a sympathetic judge in a sympathetic jurisdiction to maybe issue a warrant that uh, there isn't really probable cause to suspect the criminal violation. Uh, they might try to go into some fishing expeditions like that. 
potentially uh, we could have, uh, um, as has been leaked to us, the governor uh, uh, asked for legislation to close the existing owner loophole after a mass casualty event next year, uh, where the existing people who have uh, dutifully followed the registration uh, requirement of the law uh, are given 90 days to surrender those registered firearms and accessories to the uh, police, or they face an additional felony charge. And that's uh, the story we're getting, is that the governor has uh, welcomed uh, uh, this behind the scenes, and they've already planned it. And if there's a mass casualty incident, especially if it happens in Illinois, the governor is going to welcome this uh, uh, option for new legislation to close the existing owner loophole. And then again, ex uh, existing owners who have registered would have 90 days to surrender their firearms to police or face a knock on the door from the state police asking, hey, you registered these guns. Why didn't you surrender them within the uh, the window? Uh, we're here today to pick them up, or we're going to pick them up and take you to jail. And I think that's potentially on the uh, the horizon. Other things, uh, we've got uh, rumors that uh, some people are trying to come up with workarounds to uh, facilitate uh, the Illinois State Police doing uh, some uh, fishing expeditions. Uh, again, trying to identify some of these people who have purchased firearms who may not be in, uh, as they see a compliance with the law. Uh, that's not how our country works, though. It's innocent until proven guilty, not guilty until you've proved your innocence by proving that you no longer have these guns in the state of Illinois. Uh, but a lot of things could happen. Obviously, the governor and people like Representative Bob Morgan are not going to sit by idly when there's 99.4% noncompliance with their precious little law. Uh, that, I think, is a very sore spot with them. I think they're losing sleep over that. I think they're very angry about that privately. We'll have to wait and see after the first of the year what their next steps are. But I have no doubt they're gaming this two or three steps into the future. And, of course, we're trying to figure out what those uh, plans are and trying to advise gun owners accordingly. John Bach, the executive director of Gun Save Life, greatly appreciate you taking the time. We'll obviously be checking back in with you, uh, especially heading into the new year. Hopefully you had a great Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year to you. All right. You as well. Happy New Year, Greg. Congratulations on the uh, new format. Uh, love the show and keep up the great work. And we love watching you on the Internet. And I encourage people to subscribe and to follow you along. Well, I appreciate that uh, uh, endorsement there. Uh, and uh, we'll definitely be talking again in the near future. John Bach, Gun Save Life. Greatly appreciate your time. Sounds good. Thank you, Greg. Take care.